Okay, so now that we've created our Doctor Strange's disc or shield effect in Photoshop, I'm going to now show you how for After Effects and for all your video work, so if you're doing a short film about Doctor Strange or you're putting something else together, I'm going to show you how we can animate all the layers that we've put together in Photoshop. So let's come over here and double click in the workspace and find the file. So I called mine Making of Magic and I'm going to open it. And when it comes in, we're going to import the kind as a composition and we're going to leave the layer options as editable layer styles and select OK. Now that we've done that, you'll see it's coming as its own composition. So I'm going to double select that and it'll open up a brand new window with the composition information. And we have all our individual layers that we saved in Photoshop or brought in and put onto our timeline in the sequence that we set it up in in Photoshop. So as you can see, the bottom layer shows up at the bottom on the timeline and the top layer in which we saved in Photoshop has saved up as the top layer. So one thing that we've got, we've got the background, the background layer, I'm just going to hide all these other layers. The background layer is black and we want to keep the background layer there. So do not delete it. It's not there for no reason. The reason we put a black solid behind all our white elements is so that when we change the screen modes in the effect, we don't want to uh, lose the elements, but at the same time, that black helps us to change the color in the transparencies and it's going to help us with the glows. So whenever you're building effect, same, for example, if you're building a Iron Man HUD, it's exactly the same. We keep the black layer behind it. So therefore, when we composition it and we're, uh, or composite it and we're using uh, the visual effect on our video, um, it will be able to use all the uh, luminosity and uh, we'll be able to change um, some of the screen modes with it. So now we're going to do that. We're going to go through our layers and we're going to start animating them. Now, first of all, I want this animation to run for 10 seconds only. So let's uh, just type 10 here and I'll move our cursor on the timeline and then I'm going to press N as you can see to cut off the work area. So this is going to be the area in which that will save and render out. And all this here, doesn't matter what size um, that you have on your timeline, we just want to run it for 10 seconds. If you want it to run for 20, 30 seconds or so forth, you can do that as well. So if I press a space bar, you'll see it will start to play within that period of time. So it will run for those 10 seconds. And then what will happen is it will generally, if I was to render it out, that area is the only work area. As you can see, it will just keep on looping in between there. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're working on. I'm going to go right to the very beginning and we'll start with the very first layer. So I'm going to select the center wheel. I'm going to press R and I'm going to select the stopwatch so I can set a keyframe as you can see. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to go straight to the very end of the work area. So that 10 seconds and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to write 180. And I'm going to press the space bar. So we're going to see what speed that rotates at. So as you can see, we've got a nice slow rotation and that's great. So 180 it is. And I'm going to come down to the square now. So I'll close this down by pressing R and I'm going to press R for rotation on square two. And I'm going to come make sure it's at the very beginning of the timeline. Select the stopwatch to set a keyframe, go straight to the end. And what I want to do now is I'm going to come up here and put 180, but I'm going to put negative in first. So negative 180. So what will happen is it rotates the opposite direction. Now, by doing that, um, it's going to give us some nice movement. So you've got one wheel slowly rotating one way, the other one slowly rotating the other. But what it's doing is it actually looks like the speed in between is twice as fast. So again, we're going to go straight to the beginning again. So I'm pressing home on my keyboard so I can go right to the very beginning of the workspace. Come down to square two, R. Select the keyframe. Go to the end. And with this one, I'm just going to make this one 180 and bring that back to the beginning of the timeline. And let's have a look to see what happens. So I've got one square going one direction and one square going the other direction. Now, one thing you'll notice is the square appears to be going the same speed because it is going the same speed, the 180, as the inside circle. 
So what we want to do is we want to adjust it so it has a different speed. So let's go to the very end of our workspace again. You can see where the keyframe is on the timeline. And that's it there. I've got it selected. And we're going to make some adjustments here. So we're going to come up over here and I'm going to put a 1. And that's going to double the speed. So if I have a look now, we've got one spinning twice as fast of a resolution going faster than the center and the outer side going the other direction. So what we want to do now is we want to move straight into our inner text. So we won't touch the outer text. We'll go straight to our inner text. Press R for rotation. Let's press home to, on the keyboard to go back at the very beginning. Setting a keyframe again. And this time I'm going to go straight to the end. It's going to come in here now. I'm going to put 180 as the resolution. And I want to put this one here as 2. And just see the speed that we've got. So as you can see, I've now doubled the speed. Not just once, but twice the speed all the way around. It's going faster than the other square that's going at the one speed. We've got the nice center going and the external one going the opposite direction. So what we'll do is we're looking at this and maybe that's a little bit too fast. So let's go back to the very end where the keyframe is. And I might just drop that back to one and just see what that looks like. So I'm just doing a render preview right now. And that's hard enter on the keyboard. Okay, so that's probably a better speed. But again, it's keeping up to the square, as you can see. So let's change that. Let's go straight to the end. And let's change that back to zero. And see what speed that runs in. So what will happen is now this is running a little bit slower while the square is going faster. So once you're happy with that, obviously you can make other adjustments. You don't have to keep on putting the same bit of information I'm putting in. I'm just doing this for the demonstration. Let's go to the ruins now. Let's put the rotation in. So let's have a look. So we've got our text going right. So let's make the ruins go the opposite direction. So let's go back home, set a keyframe. Go to the very end to the 10 seconds. Let's put in negative. Let's just put in negative 1360. So by putting negative 360 in there, you can see it's going to rotate all the way through to the very end of the that rotation putting into negative one. So I'm gonna press the hard enter so we can do a render preview. And we're just gonna have a look at what we're doing at the moment. Okay, so that looks good. I like the speed that's going. I like it's going the opposite direction of the text, which is then going the opposite direction to the square, which we've got another square rotating. And then we've got the inner effect moving as well. Now, the last thing we want to do is just make the outside text rotate. So I'm going to go up to the outer text, press R for rotation, make sure it's at the beginning of my timeline, set a keyframe, go to the very end. And on this one here, I'm going to make it 250. And let's have a look with a RAM preview at the speeds that we've got. So it's not going... 360 in in the rotation and when I talk about 360 360 means one full rotation so if I was to actually start changing the values in here if I was to put 360 it would equal one rotation so this is a rotational value so for example let's go to the eclipse now this one you won't see the rotation because of the fact that it's a set circle but if I was to come down here and go to the very end and put 360 degrees, you'll notice that this will change to one. So what it's actually saying is one is the rotational value of it. So from here 
at the very beginning of the timeline to the 10 second mark, that's gonna be one rotation of this element. So if I wanted it to rotate 10 times within 10 seconds, so one rotation every 10 seconds, I could just simply put 10 in here and it would allow that to happen. So what I wanna do now, the final step to this animation before we render it out, is I'm going to add a motion blur. So come up here on our project timeline and up the top it says enables motion blur for all layers with the motion blur switch set. So let's select that to turn it on. Let's come down to toggle modes. And in here, in this little box, you can see there's a representation of the motion blur here. And we're gonna simply put a little tick in each one allowing that all layers that are rotating to have a natural motion blur in them. So the final effect will look like this. So I'm just gonna do a render preview now. And After Effects is now starting to evaluate it. And as you can see, there is a slight Gaussian blur on the elements that are moving. So it's gonna give you that natural blur look. So let's have a look. So you've got that nice blur that's happening and we've got our effect all animated. So what I've done is in the previous tutorial, I've showed you how you can make this effect in Photoshop, like it did for my original Doctor Strange shield effect or magic shield effect. And I've now shown you how to do that, bring it in in layers and animate each individual layer. So I'm gonna render it out now. So let's go to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. And as you can see, it's come down in the render queue and we're gonna make some changes here. So output mode, I'm gonna come up to the lossless settings. I'm gonna come down and I'm going to make it quick time. And let's go to format options. And I'm gonna leave this at animation. And I'm gonna put the quality as 100% and select okay. I'm not going to select audio output because there is no audio in this effect. Now the reason I selected the animation values because it's gonna be a nice, sharp, crisp, effect and video that you can use over and over again with all your other work. Select OK. Select the output too. And we'll find a location where we're going to put it. And I'm going to press save and select render. And what will happen is After Effects is now going to render out this video clip and put it into a QuickTime video at the animation preset so that it's nice and sharp, ready to go for your own visual effects work. So again, if you're making your own Doctor Strange and you make it a lot different than the one I've showed you how to make it, then that's an option for you. And also the other option is, if you're making your own HUDs like Iron Man HUDs or anything else, this is also the same type of method that you'll be using, which is something else I'll be doing later on in one of our Film Masters tutorials. And now that we've done that, let's have a look and have a look at the actual video that we've created. So you can see nice and crisp, clean effect, all done, ready to go, and then be imported into After Effects, into one of your projects, so that you can get straight into doing the effect. If you wanna see how to composite this effect into After Effects, select the tutorial on the left-hand side, or if you wanna see how to use the element in an image to make your own movie posters or just show your friends an image of yourself as Doctor Strange, select the video on the right.